I'm in Egypt, visiting a brick kiln in the Al Giza Desert, 90 kilometers from Cairo. With me is Andy Foxcroft from Safe Haven for Donkeys and the veterinary team he works with, attending to the donkeys that pull cartloads of bricks day in, day out in the hot Middle Eastern sun. No sooner had we arrived than we were rushed to a very sick donkey laying down in his stable, desperately ill and close to death. And um, this, this donkey is clearly very ill, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Can you, um, Andy, do you know how old this donkey is as a matter of interest? Can you tell? We, we can, yeah, yeah, once we have looked at his teeth. Yeah. yeah. The donkey was thin, malnourished, cold, and barely able to stand. My immediate thought being that this poor donkey was beyond saving. This is uh, very, very sad. He's been down for a very long time, which means his circulation is... Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. So getting him up will help his circulation. Uh -huh. He's very cold as well. Is it? Yeah. If you if you touch him, he's 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 very cold. Would this be as a result of exhaustion or just age or? The the donkey's quite thin. Yeah. So it's probably exhaustion. He's probably been worked, even though he's thin. Yeah. Um, and this is quite a common problem, but it could be a problem with his teeth. Yeah. Which is why he's lost weight condition, but he's in very, very poor condition. How long would the donkey be left like this before Shaban would be called in? Well, they've, they've obviously called him in because the donkey's down. Yes. So that's that's why we're probably here today yeah. as a result of, and of the owner. But, you, you know, obviously they should have called us well before that, yeah. but they've waited until the donkey is very, very poorly before yeah. they've called us, Yeah. which is not good. But again, this is all part of the process of hopefully uh, providing confidence to the brick kiln owners that you know we're around and if they've got a concern they should call us and we yeah. can come and have a look at the animal uh, before, it gets, before they get to this stage. Exactly. Would they be hoping to revive this donkey to a, a degree where it may be able to work again? Uh, yes, oh yeah. Yes. But, yeah. But Shaban will be very clear about the fact that it must have sufficient rest yeah. and allow it to build up. It's, yeah. it's got to build up body weight, yeah. uh, otherwise the harness, as you can see here, the harness will cause um, sores. Yes. I mean, that sore is already being, it's covered in, with flies, so it's yeah. going to become... That's a relatively new a new injury. So whether it's yeah. happened because the donkey's gone down, I'm not really yeah. sure. But it's obviously very, very weak. Yes. Um, lack of um, fluids, lack of food, uh, which is why, you know, why it's gone down. Yeah. And... What was what was put into the saline drip then? The yellow stuff. What's uh, that? That's multivitamins. Oh, it's multivitamins. Yeah. Right. If you feel yeah, you, you feel it's quite cool. Yeah. That's uh, here. It's it's much much warmer. Yeah. So the blood is circulating. Yeah, I can feel so, it's warmer here as well now. Yeah, yeah. Very very skinny though, poor thing. Yeah. Yes. It's undigested food. Yeah. I think. It's Tea. Teeth. Yeah. Tea. So when they get these birds, they cause really painful uh, yeah. ulcers on the side of the mouth, and that stops them from eating. What kind of nutrients can they get though from uh, sort of brushwood? Well, I mean, they do. They do, uh, uh, but it's because they browse for 14 to 17 hours a day. Yeah. Uh, so they eat huge amounts of uh, very low calorific food. Yeah. But that's enough to keep keep them uh, in a good condition. Um, but they are desert animals, uh, and they're, they, they're designed for living in, in very harsh conditions. Yeah. I mean, I, I suppose the first thing one would say objectively is this is a pretty awful life for a human being. It is. I mean, working in these conditions, in this heat, the amount of hard work they are all doing. Um, and they do it with such good grace, and they've all been absolutely charming. And that makes me feel even sadder about the fact they use an animal as a commodity, as a machine, rather than a sentient being. And that's where the education has Comes got to in. come in. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can't just treat the animals, we've got to make sure that we stop those injuries from happening in the first place, yeah. whether they're from harness wounds, 
poorly fitting harnesses or whether it's beating. Beatings. So this work that's happening here now is happening as a result of safe haven for the dogs, basically. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're funding uh, a team of three people, a vet and two farriers. Yeah. And um, they're servicing, there's probably around, I don't know, about uh, nearly 100 kilns in this area. How long have you been doing this kind of work in this area? We started this, the the team have been working in the area for many years, um, up until 2017. Um, So we started this, we started the project back up again in March this year. So we've been working um, in the kilns uh, for you know, the last six months. Right. So the brick kiln owners have no veterinary support without yeah. us. So it's absolutely, you know, we're providing a vital function. And the, and the owners want us here. They want us to yes. uh, uh, help And is there a move towards animal sentience in any of this, or is it just practical? Uh, I would say very little. I mean, there's a lot of work we've got to do to uh, help people understand uh, donkeys. So, for instance, the, 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 the mentality is that donkeys don't feel pain, yes. which is why you see them being beaten so often. Yeah. Why, is, why do they have that sense that donkeys don't feel pain? Donkey, um, again, going back to their natural habitat, donkeys are prey animals. Yeah. And um, if they show fear, then it means that they, they're potentially in danger from predators. Yeah. So they do not show fear. Unlike horses, if, if a horse is ill, or if a horse is scared, it bolts naturally, yeah. a donkey will stand still. Right. So when you hear all this stuff about stubborn donkeys, it's because they're frightened and they're, yeah. not, they're not moving because they're frightened. In the same way as when they're beaten, they won't show the, the pain, they won't show the fear. Because, because they're frightened, it will encourage more beating. Well, it's, it's a natural instinct yeah. to prevent them being eaten by, by, their, by, yeah. by their predators. Um, so that has sort of translated into donkeys don't feel pain, yes. which is why they get relentlessly beaten, uh, and why they're also allowed to suffer, um, you know, these these horrendous harness wounds. It was time to look closer at the running of the kiln itself. The team showed me the heart of the operation, where the bricks are dried in the sun and then fired, and it's where I could see for the first time the scale of abuse the donkeys are subjected to, and most shocking of all, the amount of abuse at the hands of young children. So these these are dried, sun-dried bricks, Yeah. and they're now going into the kiln. So see see how narrow it is? Yeah. Those doorways are narrow to keep the heat of the kiln in. Yeah. So what the, what's happening now is that, and, and you'll see the donkey turning around. Yeah. The tractor could not do that. So this is one of the reasons why they use donkeys. They're, they're, yeah. they're using donkeys. These guys are strong, aren't they? But just you know, they, these these guys are uh, you know, or load the bricks onto the, onto the pile. Yeah. Um, the the chimneys with the you know that are taking all the gas fumes away. Yeah. They produce the heat which goes at the bottom. <laughs> What they'll do is they put straw on top yeah. to keep the heat in, uh, but basically the heat comes into the And bottom. they get enough heat from this to cook the bricks? Yeah. So if they, move, they move this arm over and they have fire that comes down on the bricks. And when the bricks are cooked, they change colour? Yes, they go red. They go red, yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Donkeys whipped and beaten to work harder and faster, as children as young as 10 carried huge loads of bricks from the kilns to the trucks under the blazing sun, working from 4 a.m. till midday with only half an hour break every day of the week. What hope for the donkeys when children are exposed to such a harsh environment? To see small children who obviously want to show the adults how adept and clever they are and their means of doing that is to beat the poor animal more than they need to. Yeah. Or they compete with each other. Yeah. And, and they think it's fun because, I, I think as you said earlier, um, Andy, that they believe that donkeys don't feel pain. That's right. So there's again a strange dichotomy in that they, they're not intending to cause pain to the donkey. They just don't understand that they are causing pain. That's right. 
Yeah. So there's, we go, the education is so important. Yeah. Absolutely. That, yeah. that element is going to be massive yeah. in terms of getting them to understand that donkeys do feel pain. Yeah. Can, can you t tell me uh, what it is like for a, a child, first of all, in the situation of working in a brick kiln, what their life on a daily basis is like? Can you share anything yes. with me about that? Yes, without any judgment for the yes, children absolutely. and the, the donkey handlers, mm -hmm. our objectives mm -hmm. and uh, in the project with the Safe Haven, uh, we need to improve all the skills or the knowledge about uh, the donkey handler. They need interactive exercises, interactive mm -hmm. sessions. They need to see how can uh, we communicate with yes. donkeys. And already we have some activities, so interactive activities by drawing, by games. Yeah, to improve their relationship exactly. with the animal. Yes. Because, because what was very clear to me yesterday was that the children are not intentionally cruel. It's just that they don't think that the donkey has feelings. And so, one, they are performing a job, which is to make the animal work faster. But they are also wanting to impress the adults in, who are there to show them that they can do their job and in terms of doing their job they sometimes maybe beat the donkey too much is that is that right yes yeah and what is also in terms of the children they work in the kilns what two or three days a week or every day six days per week so, and what about their education the children's formal education yes uh, I think uh, most of children they didn't have any education okay they didn't have any education yeah. so the future for those young children yes is that they will grow into adulthood working in the kiln yes and so I think we saw some young people there yesterday who had started at 12 and 20 years later yeah they're still working M most out. of them amazing most of them well that's incredible yes care of the donkeys hooves is one of the most critical aspects of the aid they receive and I was amazed with the speed, skill, and dexterity of the farriers. When they pull these heavy loads, they're yeah. getting coronary band injuries. The coronary band is part, of, part of the hoof, yeah. which gets That's damaged the when they're pulling very heavy weights. Yeah. When it gets damaged, the hoof produces excess hoof growth. Uh, so you get these very deformed hooves. Yes. And this is where you can make an instant difference. Yes. So, you know, what, what, uh, what, Hamid is doing here is is relieving is relieving you know quite a few problems. Yeah, straightening out the hoof, preventing damage, further damage to the to the legs and the tendons. Taking an awful lot off here. Yeah, absolutely. I, how often does this have to be done? Uh, ideally, it should be done every uh, you know in, in a perfect world every twelve weeks. But chances are it'll probably happen once a year. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. So can you not encourage this to happen more frequently, or is it just cost? So part, part of the program is to train up more farriers yeah. who will work independently of our team, yeah. and they'll charge the brick kiln owners for their services, yeah. and they'll service you know, as many brick kilns as they can. So that's the idea. My first visit here, and every donkey I'm looking at has got this, yeah. uh, this severe problem yeah. on the top of its spine here, yeah. which is caused from harness rubbing, as you say. Yeah. I mean, if, if that is so evident, I'm surprised that it isn't sold by the manufacturer of the harness. So, so the harness design is, is absolutely key. Harnesses are often just put together um, you know, by the, the, the kiln owners themselves yeah. or the handlers. So they're not always the best fitting. So again, part of the job of the team is to talk to them about how they should uh, um, use the harnesses, yeah. how they should adapt them, how they should adapt the wagons as well. It's not just the harnesses. It's yeah. if, if the wagons um, um, are not in a very good condition, you know, maybe the, the wheels are, are not working as well yeah. as they could do, that could cause a problem. So this is a as a result of the harness just constantly rubbing on, this, yeah. on a very tender yeah. point. Yeah. And it seems... I mean, it's, it's it's not rocket science to say, oh, this is a problem, it can be solved quite easily, yep. even if it means putting something soft on the top of the spine. Yes, absolutely. Just to, yeah. you know... That's absolutely right. Yeah. Over the last few years, Dr. Shaban 
has seen tens of kilns helping hundreds of donkeys. To manage these locations effectively, he's developed a traffic light system that enables his team to prioritize those places in greatest need. And you were saying yesterday that you had a three-color alert yeah, yeah, yeah. in terms of, uh, uh, like a traffic lights, yeah, red, yeah. amber, and green, yeah, in yeah. terms of the Good attitude, system, yeah. the attitude and, and commitment of the kiln owners yeah, yeah. to the animals that, and, yeah, in yeah. their care, as yeah, it were, or at their employ. Yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, because we started with to work with in the brick kiln, so with a safe haven. Uh, from March, uh, uh, from March until now. But mm -hmm. the first three months, we did like a welfare assessment to understand the real situation of the donkey inside the brick kilns. Mm -hmm. uh, after the, we did like a welfare assessment, we divided, we selected like a, we asked ourselves uh, uh, which uh, is the best five kilns in the in this in this mm -hmm. area. Uh, we we called these five kilns like a green kilns. Mm -hmm. Then we have a, like a group like a yellow and red. Red mm -hmm. means like the the welfare, the welfare of the donkey mm -hmm. is the worst compared to with the yellow and the green. Green, me, 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 green means it is the is 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 best uh, welfare. Is the best, yeah. Is the best related to the yellow and the... Indeed. Uh, and, and, uh, and yesterday, where would you categorize yesterday in terms of the traffic? It, is red. it was red. Uh, he's now uh, told you from 12 years ago, yeah. the donkey is, is better now than now. I spoke with the kiln owner to learn more about him and his attitude towards his donkeys. He's owned this kiln for 12 years and maintains that the welfare of his eight donkeys is better now than ever. But I felt it was more down to the actions of Safe Haven for Donkeys and their commitment to offer free support than him actively seeking veterinary help. I also wasn't entirely sure that he had a genuine compassion for the donkeys, seeing them instead as tools of the trade that needed maintenance to prevent them from breaking down. Well, thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to meet you, and thank you very much. Fantastic. I then had a chat with his young son. It was a very different conversation, but in many ways quite insightful. Khalid. Salam alaikum. Hello. How are you? My name is Peter. Yes. It's very nice to meet you. So, do you work here at the brick kiln? Do you work here at the brick kiln? Ah, yes. He, he does? Yeah. He works but part time, not full time. Not full time? Cause, yes. Because he goes to school? Yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, does he like donkeys? But he likes the or not? Huh? He likes the He's feeling uh, the sometimes playing with donkeys. He, he plays with donkeys? Yes. yes. And uh, when, he's, when he's working with the donkeys, does he treat them nicely? And the 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 and ليه ليه so he, yes. he thinks that if he yes. beats them, they work faster. Exactly, uh -huh. for fast. Yes, he is almost time. Uh, if you not running, yeah. he is not happy. What I was very impressed with was uh, on the last donkey I saw, the harness wound had been dealt with. Although there's a bit of a harness wound here, and then I noticed that in its hindquarters it had a very clear wound, which I didn't understand. And they said it's from beating. Yes, and this 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 is a. This is a typical harness wound. Yes. This here is a is a typical beating wound. Yeah. So um, but you have to hit very hard to, to draw blood, don't you? You do, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But again, it's this perception that the donkey isn't feeling pain. Yes. So you've got to hit it harder to make it feel the pain.
So this one hasn't healed, he's gone blind in that no, eye? No, he, he is going blind, but yeah. he's our target now. We need to avoid infection, yes. the band of sulmites, to avoid removing him. Both donkeys and mules are used in the kilns. Injuries from beatings vary and depend on the handler's approach to discipline. This particular mule had been hit in the head, causing him to become blind in one eye. Even though his sight was beyond saving, Dr. Shaban and his team worked hard to prevent further infection. Unresolved issues in this part of the body could easily prove fatal. And what I thought was very sad as well, because um, they don't treat humans, uh, because the humans treat them in the way that they do, they don't treat humans as friends. Yeah. Whereas every other donkey I've met in different circumstances are very interactive. And I, you, you can walk into a field with donkeys and they want to come and communicate with you. Absolutely. Very sad that you, you don't get that response. Several hours later, I was stunned to see the donkey who I felt was close to death trying to eat. And while he was still unable to chew and swallow, it was remarkable to see the transformation. Literally two hours earlier, he was unable to raise his head. I mean, that's an amazing transformation. It is. It is. It's done an incredible job. Yeah. The other, the other thing with donkeys is um, often when you, when you, when you realise that there's something wrong with them. You know, and colic is a good example. When you realize that they may have colic, it's often too late. Yeah. Because of this uh, fact that they don't show pain, they don't show fear, Yeah. Uh, often mask the fact that they're very, very ill. So yeah. when you do realize they're ill, it sometimes can be, you know, just too late to do anything about it. Sure. Obviously, in this case, um, you know, we've managed to, we've managed to bring it around. Right to solve the issue, Dr. Shaban began a procedure to deburr and repair the donkey's teeth using equipment that enabled him to work quickly and effectively with minimal impact to the donkey. All being well, this would resolve the eating issue almost immediately and allow the donkey to chew, swallow and ingest food, something that he desperately needed to ensure long-term health and survival. What is strange to me is that all of the people we have met, the kiln owner, all the young people, all the workers, are incredibly friendly, warm, contactable, and they, they represent a degree of caring, but they clearly have no visceral caring for animals. No, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, they're a machine yeah. to do a job. Yeah. Um, they understand that the animals get sick and get ill and yeah. get injured, which is why they call us. And we were called to that, that donkey yeah. this morning because it was uh, down. Obviously, it was far too... Should it, we should have been called a lot earlier. Absolutely. But anyway, we were called, which is a good thing. Yeah. And I think the fact that they are so hospitable, so friendly, you know, gives us an opportunity to... to pass over some yeah. information about how they can do things better. And do you do they receive that and do they act on it? They do. Yes. And and the team, I mean, the, 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 uh, Muharram, Hamid, yeah. Dr. Shaban, they're organizing courses yeah. for, Wonderful. for the brick kiln yeah. owners, for the handlers, you know, to show them yeah. best ways of, of managing and yeah. looking after their donkeys. As I prepared to leave, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The same donkey broken and close to death hours earlier, had been revived to a state of health that had to be seen to be believed. 
Rarely do I get to see such a positive end to my experiences, but this was really quite unexpected. And a great testament to the work done by Andy, Dr. Shaban, Eslam, and the team at Safe Haven for Donkeys, who, without any doubt, saved this poor donkey's life. Without this team, many more donkeys would simply fade away, dying as a result of their many injuries sustained in the harsh realities of the Egyptian brick kilns. Malnourished, dehydrated, beaten, and broken.